please understand that any advice in today's session is of a general nature only and that your personal circumstances have not been taken into consideration. All right, so let us have a look at uh, what's happened, what's happening uh, this week. Um, as you can see from my calendar, we have a, a busy week. Okay, so there's quite a few things happening. There's a couple of hot topics going around in the markets which are moving the markets quite significantly and this volatility that we're experiencing is actually really good for traders because that's what we're looking for. We need some movement so that we can, our positions can come around and, and, and kind of fulfill themselves. Now from what we have on our agenda this week, um, possibly uh, Mr. Draghi speaking on the wee hours of Tuesday morning or should I say late, late tonight, is going to have some kind of an impact. It's probably the highlight of the week, uh, predominantly because uh, the Euro stocks have been falling, bonds have been surging, and investors are really keen to see if the ECB starts to send out some kind of a signal uh, on their intentions, whether they will be looking to increase their stimulus. Okay, In other words, more monetary easing and more printing of euros, which should, if they decide to go forward with that, it should decrease uh, the value of the euro. Okay, So this one's going to be an interesting one to look out for. That's tonight. Uh, the other hot topic which everybody is really, really keen on is if anybody that's looked at any Japanese yen charts, um, the Japanese yen has been increasing in strength significantly and everybody is starting to get edgy and everybody's looking towards the BOJ, the central bank, for some kind of intervention. Now, the Japanese bank, central banks are notorious for this. They, they've done it in the past. They have history of doing this. So it is a, a hot, hot moment that if you happen to land and you're in a trade there, it could really make your day. It can move very spectacularly and very, very quickly. So all of a sudden, with the Japanese yen, particularly against the US yen, where we've seen the US yen decrease in value significantly over the last, say, two weeks. Um, everybody's starting to think, are they going to jump in? Are they going to jump in? And people are starting to position themselves. The more stops that start to go into the system, the further it trickles. So it's kind of like a catch-22 effect. So we need to be careful, but basically the message that I'm sending out is to keep an eye out on the BOJ. Any announcement, depending what the announcement is, understand what the significance, if they say all of a sudden that they're going to increase by a $1 trillion of stimulus, for example, we should see the Japanese yen fall fall quickly, okay? And which basically would mean for a pair like the US yen, it would it would rally back up to the levels that was at say two weeks ago, which are significant trades. So everybody has got their eye on the BOJ. So please be aware of that and just uh, put an alert. You know, you can put alerts for certain types of news that you're interested in, so that if anything comes out. Basically, we are made aware of it. Now, last Friday, we saw uh, something interesting. It's uh, I know I'm going to speak a little bit about a commodity. I'm speaking about oil. Now, it does have an influence on the US dollar, which effectively has an influence on most of the major currency pairs that we trade. Now, the markets were significantly calmer on Friday, and that was mainly because of OPEC uh, basically saying that they are now ready to cooperate or listen um, in some way, f shape, or form, to the to cut in the output of oil. In other words, they everybody realizes there is a massive surplus of oil, and oil has plummeted in price. With Iran now, their embargo lifted a couple of weeks ago, and they're just about ready to start to put their oil up on the market. All of a sudden, OPEC has said, yes, maybe we should do something and we should limit the amount that is made available. Now, surprisingly from all of that, generally when uh, something of that nature is rumored, circulated or made public notice, we usually hear something from Saudi Arabia in, in the country as in to say, we don't care, we're going to continue to produce it. But this time around, nothing's come out, nothing's been said, which kind of hints at, you know, that they are accepting um, what's going on. 
What that could mean is it could mean a little bit of a recovery in oil. I don't know how much, but it could also signal more strength and more stability for the US dollar. Okay, so that is one that to to keep on the side. All right, and uh, when we tie and we correlate all of our analysis, uh, it's important to know what's going on, uh, especially if you want to be in trades that are going to be a little bit longer than say two or three days or a week trade, for example. All right, now. This particular week, I think uh, the GBP is the one that's going to be um, has the most significant data. They've got the unemployment, their labour figures, okay, the claimant count change. They've also got CPI figures uh, due out as well, and uh, retail sales. Now, there's also the talks with um, the uh, they're calling it the Brexit, whether Britain is going to exit. Uh, the agree uh, agreements in in the eurozone, uh, which is kind of not allowing strength, and it's it's is it basically creating indecision with the pound. Now these pieces of inf uh, data that's coming out this week are significant uh, data, and probably I am going to say that because of all the British and the combination of US data that is due out this week, the pair that is most likely going to move the most directly as a consequence of raw data is probably going to be the GBP USD. Okay, so put that one as an alert, just make sure that you're aware of these key moments when data is coming out. It's the one that's probably going to react the most to, to data. From a local point of view, um, we have the, our monetary meeting in minutes for the Aussie dollars. We don't expect too many surprises there. Um, it, it's no surprise where we are, uh, where we're aiming, so we don't really think anything's going to happen there. We also have our employment and unemployment rates. Usually for Australia, un unless these numbers are very, very badly missed, like we're way off the mark, they don't tend to move the market super uh, in a super amount, okay, or, or great significance. So, uh, but that's on a home front. Other than that, that's pretty much it. Uh, the highlight again is uh, Mr. Draghi speaking tonight. Look out for the Bank of Japan. If, if, if there's any signs of intervention, that's the one that's probably going to move the market the most. GBP USD is the data um, vulnerable one this week. Let's bring on our charts. Let's see what we've got. And uh, any questions that anybody has, please feel free to type them away and I will make sure that I address them for you. All right, so last week we were able to place this nice line on our charts and we are monitoring. We never actually got an entry directly off that. Okay, we analyzed this situation here and we said it wasn't quite a shooting star scenario so we opted not to trade it. We've been waiting since, nothing has happened, it's been kind of zigzaggy and not much, uh, no direction, so to speak. What I noticed today is that I have now been able to draw a second line up here. So, effectively, what I want to do right now is I want to get rid of the first one. So, let me get rid of this one. And I'm interested to see... What, what's going to happen in this vicinity over there? Are we going to break it and make the move back up or are we going to bounce back off it? And I'm open to both types of trades. Okay, because this is a line that is angled downwards. If I break it upwards, it is a legitimate trade. And if I don't break it and I bounce back down, then I'm happy to trade off the resistance. All right. Now, in the current uh, setup, my moving averages indicate to me uh, it doesn't quite look like it, but they indicate to me that I, I am in an uptrend. So I'm also looking for pullbacks. If I get a pullback situation where I can take a trade. Now, I would prefer that all happens after I get through this, this level here. Uh, this line is quite significant. It's got three touches. All right, which makes it, uh, it it's it's you, it should not be ignored. All right, so what I would what I would be, if I had to guess what's going to happen next, you know, we could see this, 
come back into this area and then move into that direction like that. So I'm very keen to see if I get the setups breaking across you know for for the up or if I get, wait for a pullback if I get the setups down there waiting for that direction. Now if that doesn't happen it's not going to hurt me because I'm not going to trigger any trades until I see what I need. All right, so just remember, it's very, very important that we're not trying to predict the market here. We're just trying to find the trades that are going to give us the highest probability. And if they come and they do arrive, then we want to be in a position that we understand what's going on so that we can actually pull the trigger. All right, so they're the, the best things that I can see for the Aussie dollar. Let me just have a quick look at a four hour chart. One moment. Okay, it's quite a smooth looking chart, okay? Um, so I'll stand by what I've just said. I, I, I am liking a break through that, all right? So I'm gonna stay on it. Now I'm trying, one important thing is if you're trading technicals, all right, you, we, you may be influenced by a fundamental bias. Your fundamental bias might be that you might have a US strength, which essentially what will happen is it will prevent you from being able to pull the trigger on such a trade because your fundamentals are saying one thing and your technicals are saying another thing. It's great when they both marry up because it gives you that really nice warm fuzzy feeling about your trade but you need to make a decision on to how much weighting you give on either the technical or the fundamentals. I tend to trade what I see Okay, I look at the fundamentals mainly to, to just get a feel for the market and understanding. And with my fundamentals, it's generally if I'm intending on staying in a trade for a longer period of time. So for example, if I was thinking if I had a, a two month, three month sort of outlook on something and I was willing to be in a trade for that long, that's when I lean towards my fundamentals more. But anything that I might be in a trade for a day to say two weeks, well then the technicals for me is sufficient to pull the trigger on the trade. Does that make sense to everybody? Because many of you will have that dilemma within you when you have a bias that the market's going to do X, Y, Z and we get a, a trigger in the opposite direction based on the technicals and then we tend to shy away from the trade. Okay, so we all clear on that? Yep, all good? Fantastic. All right, I think I accidentally muted myself there for one moment. Sorry, guys. Some of you are saying that the sound was gone. All right, so Aussie dollar, just to conclude, we're going to wait to see what happens at this resistance line. I'm looking for a break or a rejection of that, and I'm happy to trade either or. Let's move on, Euro USD. Okay, Euro USD. Now, are we in an uptrend or a downtrend? Help me out, uptrend or downtrend? Okay, got one, two, three, four. What do we think? If you don't know, just put type in a question mark, please. Great, unanimous. Everybody is saying we're in an uptrend. Great. So if, if I'm in an uptrend, then what I'm going to be looking for is very simple. I am looking for a pullback, price action, and then trigger okay now uh, just a, a word regarding when we're in the sweet spot of a trend when we start to enter a really really good trend we ne first thing is that we never know when the trend is going to end so don't be shy about pulling the trigger so if you become a trend trader as an example the first trade is the trickiest one because 
you, you don't really know if, if it's the start of the trend or whatever but the good thing is if you pick up the first one then just keep taking every single trigger that you get on the trend and stay on it until you get a failed trade sometimes you might get seven straight trades and the last one is the reversal and you get stopped out on the last one so it doesn't it's it's still a good result okay so when a trend is just about to start it's it can be the trickiest of the trades this one that is coming up right now is would be classified as the first one if you look at my moving averages they're crossing they've come from very very flat over here and now they're just starting to fan out okay so this would be what we call our first trade in a trend if it emerges okay now the sweet spot generally what I like if if I get my setup happening in between these two moving averages or there or thereabouts it generally it generally coincides with like a nice Fibonacci level and it's just a generally a sweet spot if I go back and show you some charts can somebody just nominate a chart for me just so that I can show you that I'm not being biased someone just type in a chart first person I'll look it up Euro AUD okay here we go here's a Euro AUD and let's just focus right here let's just focus in this section here when the market went into trend alright so give me one second and I'll just move my chart over a little bit so it's more centered but I'm just going to focus on this little bit here now effectively the, they, the cross is there so the trend from this point onwards I'm looking for the pullbacks you just notice where the pullbacks happen right in the section where the two moving averages are okay sometimes it's a little bit shorter all right but see where you pull away you come back to those two moving averages pull away come back to those two moving averages pull away come back into that spot pull away come back into it and generally that's the area where the the sweetness happens and you can look at as many charts as you like and you'll watch when you hit trend we tend to come back to that region and that's where we trigger our trade from. I actually know a lot of traders that don't trade price action and what they simply do is they hit their trigger point roughly in between the two moving averages. Whether they get price action or not, they'll just pull the trigger. The only danger in that is that sometimes when you pull it over here, it moves in the opposite direction. And as you can see for us, uh, if we were trading this particular setup, you got price action, price action, price action, and then you get a break in the opposite direction, which basically means that you would not have taken this trade. So price action would have meant that this trade that I've circled, you would not have taken that trade, so you would have had the extra protection. Okay, that's the advantage, price action. All right, question being asked, what are my moving averages again? Let me check, I forget. Give me one second. It is a, a 24 exponential, I think. Yes, it's a 24 exponential and a 12, pretty sure. And a 12 exponential moving average. All right. So th these don't take these as, you know, the gospel or anything like that. You, you can play around with numbers that you like, but I generally like the 24 and the 12. They fan out. I don't like to put like a thousand moving averages on my chart, um, although there are methods that I have shown you where we have more. Um, but generally, I'm I'm quite comfortable with that. All right. So let me go back to the chart I was looking at, which was the Euro USD. As you can see, um, we've moved away from this area, and now we're starting to head back towards it. So what I'm going to look for in this area here, I'm going to look for my favorite setup, which is uh, an inside candle, an engulfing candle, a shooting star, a hammer, or something along those lines. So most of you, everybody pretty much knows what that looks like, but let me draw it out. So in an ideal world, what I would like to see is the following. I would like to see a, a red candle come in there, something like that. It can have a bit of a, a wick or not, Does it, I'm not too fussed about it. And then what I would like to see following, I'm just going to draw it in blue because it looks, uh, it's easier to see on this chart. I would like to see a blue candle, something like that, inside it, indicating the other direction. And then essentially what I, what I would do on the next candle at the break 
of that candle I hit the trade in that direction I would be left with a fractal down there my stop will be over there somewhere and that's the trade that I would like to see any questions on that does that make sense to everybody can you just give me some acknowledgement that you're understanding that yes fantastic all right so <clears throat> this particular chart um, what I do like about that section as well by the way is that if I was to draw a congestion zone there you'll notice that this could occur around about the fringe of this breakout okay so it's it's generally also a nice indicator to go that way so don't be afraid to trade the price action because if it's gonna fail there's a at least a better than 50% chance that price action will stop you from getting into the trade alright so don't be afraid of it let me get rid of this box now so that I remember what I was doing okay so Euro USD on a daily chart we're looking for a bit of a pullback this might be three candles away we just have to monitor it alright let's move on GBP USD okay GBP USD we took a trade last week on this we all voted and we said that this three candle setup was sufficiently close for us to take a trade I took the trade I think I picked up 165 pips from there to there my stop then moved to there and I got stopped out on the second half of the trade for zero and um, is anybody still in this trade because if you didn't move your stop you would still be in this trade at roughly the same level that we entered can I just get a show of hands is anybody in the trade still no no one no one's in the trade okay can I get a show of hands who thinks that it's still a valid trade so let's pretend this is the first time that I'm looking at my chart okay right now and I go oh look at this there is a setup over there it hasn't been stopped out it's holding on is that still a valid trade yes or no I've got four five six no's two yeses three yeses it's a tricky one okay um, it's a tricky one the only reason I'm going to say that it's not is simply because my one to one point has already been reached remember so I had my stop there my entry was I think we went in with uh, a pending order my entry was there and I hit my target right there so my one to one point was already stopped one to one for anybody new is when my stop distance equals some target number one target number one this so this is my stop distance to my t1 distance is one to one I already hit that so therefore I'm not uh, participating in the trade as a late comer all right so for those of you that took that trade well done let's see what we got now now I can see let me I need to step into a four-hour chart but what I can see straight away is I'm looking at something happening like that give me a second okay and let's just draw a couple of lines for those of you who don't know why I'm picking these points what I'm simply doing use your zigzag indicator to help you and let me highlight it to you see there's the zigzag indicator going up there here's a zigzag indicator there it's going there here and so far it's there so all I've done is I've drawn a line through them so I've got three touches at the top and I've drawn a line through the bottom I've got two touches down the bottom who thinks that that little triangle that I've drawn in there on a four-hour chart is valid and looks tradable okay 
Okay, so one person's made an interesting comment. So everybody's saying yes. Some, a couple of people are saying it's a little bit narrow. Okay, you're thinking we're not going to. Okay, so let me address that. Give me one second. So there's some people that are concerned that this is very narrow. So just to clarify, I am not going to attempt to trade from there to there. So if I'm trading a converging triangle and we are at the narrow section already, I'm interested in this trade breaking out or that trade breaking out where my expected target can be approximately this distance over there. Okay, so a couple of you are saying that you're only looking at daily charts. That's fine. That's okay. So I usually look at dailies, but sometimes when I'm trying to find the trade, I'll step down to a four-hour chart. This is a valid trade. Okay, so we have not broken out yet. So at the moment, nothing has happened. What I'll be looking for is the following. I will be looking for a, a clear candle that at least closes Look, it's got to be a very bearish candle. It's got to close above that. Or alternatively, I want one that looks like this. And I would prefer it to take that out as well. If that was to happen, then I'll hit the trade there. Or there. Does everybody understand what we're looking for? That's if you're looking on a four-hour chart. And if then... Let me just uh, make a rub out what I've just drawn. If I then go back to my daily chart, all right, which side do you think I prefer the break? Do you think I prefer the top break or do you think I prefer the bottom break? Which side would you th would you rather break on? Top or bottom? Okay. It's probably uh, yeah, probably 90% of you are saying bottom. Yes, I would prefer the bottom. Why? Why am I preferring the bottom? Well, first of all, I still got this resistance line over here. So if I break up there, I could come and hit that straight away, which could spoil my trade. That's reason number one. Reason number two is I'm still in downtrend, aren't I? I'm still in downtrend. So the moving averages have not crossed over. If this all of a sudden breaks down it, it will justify the trade as well okay so so those are the two options all right and it would be based off a four hour chart so let me just have a quick look the next this candle finishes in three hours time all right so in three hours time you can come and see where that candle is it should have already gone through London or just before London opens so or on London I think the four o'clock plus three seven it will be right on London open and then you, you'll be able to see what that candle looks like and whether we have a trigger or not okay all right let's carry on let's have a look at gold Okay, so remember we were, tra well, I can't remember, but we were looking at a, a break on gold and it broke really nicely. I think it might have been a line like that and it broke and really, really went off. Now, at the moment, that's a huge candle. Give me one second. That's sixty dollars for gold. That's a lot. This is a, the equivalent of like a six hundred pip candle. Here, commodities are different. Um, I'm reluctant to trade when it's it's so so far away from my moving averages. So if you were interested in trading gold, I would want this thing to pull back to about. If it matches up to this region here somewhere, somewhere in there, look for the price action and then go again. All right. So that's that's the only trade that I that I would consider doing at the moment. Um, it's a it's a very common temptation for people to see it. It's gone so far and they just want to come 
straight back down with it. Now sometimes you get that reward like there, um, but imagine if you had tried that over here, and it's gone that much against you, that's it, it's just wiped you out, alright? So try not to fall into that temptation, it's very, very common. I think if you have a good set of rules with clear cut rules, it won't happen to you. Gold this week, let's wait to see if it pulls back into the hot region. And, um, and let's see if we can trade it. Give me one second. So it should happen there somewhere. Let me just draw a couple of lines. One moment. Okay, we're kind of late on this one. I'm just seeing it now. This could have been, it's, I would have called it a little bit aggressive, but there's an inside candle right there. And to trade short, now I know I just said to resist the temptation to go against it, but this is a little bit different because I'm on a resistance line. Okay, there's three points there. Is anybody on this trade by any chance? Can everybody see that this is a resistance line with price with correct price action? Okay, great. At least you can all see it. Um, if you actually took this trade correctly, seventeen thirty. That has not reached the one to one point yet, but uh, it's definitely very heavily in your favour. All right, so there is. We missed this. So I would have had to look this morning, and I, I didn't get an opportunity to see this one. All right, so but that's valid. Alternatively, wait for it in that region, also where the moving averages might fan out, and we might be able to hit it in that direction. Let's move on. USCN. Okay, USCN. This is the what I was talking about. The US yen is kind of like a boring currency to watch, except when the Japanese side of the equation starts to go a little bit crazy. Look at that movement. That's two weeks worth, and it's just moved significantly. It's showing a little bit of reversal here. We've got an inside candle to go in this direction, but do I have a reason to trade it that way? Let's see if we can find one. Not really, this point is just like in mid-air. I don't have any reason to, to suspect why this is a, a significant turning point. And because I don't, that means that I, I would not trade this price action. I did see this one, um, but uh, I was not tempted by it. There's nothing here. At the moment, this chart, the only thing that you can really do, the, the only downside, like, to be honest, this is a trade that I would like to be long on. I would like to be in it purely as a 100% speculation because um, I get the feeling that the Bank of Japan is just going to step in and do something crazy and this is going to go bang just like that that's purely the only reasons now if you ever do that type of trading make sure that you've got a little rule in your trading plans that says I'm allowed to do XYZ and limit the risk on it okay so if you have the temptation that you need to take one pure hunch let's call it type trade that you only limit that type of trade to X amount of risk, all right? So, but I don't have a technical reason for this one, so I'm not stepping into it, all right? If something all of a sudden shows up, well then that's different, but right now, no. Let's carry on, Euro Yen. Okay, this is the most frustrating pair. Who hit full target? There was the inside candle. Who hit full target? Can I get a show of hands, please? Anybody? I know some of you were on this trade. You're a yen short. Ray did. Well done. Romy did as well. So did John. Excellent, guys. Well done. I don't know what happened. I, I missed this one, and I said it last week. Um, there's another one right now. Is anybody in this trade the other way now? Simon is. Anybody else? Is anybody is? John? Okay. Alright, so for those of you who don't know, I've missed this one again. It's just a little bit ahead of me. So I'll show it to you. Whoever wants to jump in on it a little bit late, you'll have an opportunity. 
basically let me show you there's the channel it's a very decent channel the top lines had many touches the bottom lines had a few so it, definitely valid and what's happened is the markets come down we have created an inside candle situation there's our fractal as well so which that basically means is at the break of that candle you have a legitimate buy trade your stop would be just below here and your one to one point would be over there somewhere and your target well it might you might not get two to one because it's inside a channel but it'll be somewhere over there okay so that is the trade if you are not on the trade already and you want it to jump in right now you're probably approximately 20 pips behind the ball okay so it's already moved 20 pips on you what you can do now this may fluctuate up and down you may want to put a pending order back down there and if it retraces back you it might take you into the trade so let me have a quick look at a 15 minute chart just to show you what I'm talking about okay so for example there's this is a 15 minute chart so it's just gone like that this may come back to that level and get you in and then you're up and running it may not and then you miss out on the trade so you need to make a decision who who likes this trade as a buy can I get a show of hands okay, we've got three four five six seven eight nine okay so there's a good dozen of you that like it so um, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and get in but I'm going to try and get in with a pending order so I'm just going to uh, watch it for a little bit if it just takes off on me if I'm if it gets beyond about that point there then I'll have to sit it out okay because I missed it so what I'm kind of hoping is that um, it moves just goes backwards a little bit just to get me in and then I'll trade it out all right there's nothing else on the euro yen that's a valid trade let's uh, carry on let me go to the Kiwi dollar okay Kiwi dollar we took a trade on Kiwi dollar and um, what did we take from memory we took we took the engulfing candle I don't remember if I took it at market or, or something or a pending order but I took it the trade went forward it was forward as much as about 55 pips and I think I, I had a malfunction no I, I think I put in the wrong number and my stop moved to break even and then basically when it came back um, essentially what happened was the market uh, took me out so I got out of the trade for zero I didn't make anything on it uh, but I didn't lose anything so I'm looking now and I'm starting to get that converging feeling there let me just step down a time division and see what happens again guys look where I'm drawing my line I'm picking out the pointy sections of the zigzag and I'm running a line right through them okay so for those of you who are a little bit confused and just I'm trying to make it happen as such okay based on that is there a trade here what do we think I'm on a, a step down to a four hour chart Kiwi dollar is there a trade right there okay one says yes two three four five six seven ten yes it's an engulfing candle and we are by looking at the moving averages we're kind of like in a, a uptrend and either way this would not be considered a trend trade this would be considered trading inside the parameters all right now unfortunately that would have been your entry point right there okay uh, if you were to enter right now 
you're 20 pips too late on it. The stop originally would have been 26 or 20 something, so you're very, very close to hitting your, your T1, and there was plenty of room to hit T2 before the other side. So with this type of trade, because we're coming into London right now, and London, as you all know, we can move the market rather quickly. And like a 30, 40, 60 point movement at the London Open is is not unheard of. It's quite normal, actually. So sometimes we need London to give our trade a hurry along. Sometimes London gives our trade a hurry along the wrong way and we get stopped out. So I'm just showing it. I've just noticed it right now. It is a valid entry, but we're 20 pips too late, so I'm not going to try and take it. All right. The what's more important about this is just to understand how I'm analysing my charts, uh, just to make the process easier for yourself. If you just do this like once a day, if you're trading a daily candle, uh, it'll you'll rarely miss trades. I've just been like super super busy just recently and I haven't had a chance to look at them exactly at nine o'clock and, and I've just missed a few trades but I'm going to get back into rhythm very shortly and I can assure you that if I see them I will pull the trigger all right so having said that uh, Kiwi dollar you've either got that four hour up trade or let me see Okay, I've just marked in that uh, hot region as well, up here. Uh, if the market, these two areas start to line up over there, this would be a, a really good opportunity to see what happens in that direction. All right, so I'll, I've just marked it right now. It's still, I'm, I'm probably quite a few candles away from that, but I'm just preparing just to see if anything sets up. Um, in the meantime, in theory, I'm in an uptrend here. So I'll be looking for pullback setups, but right now it's just very messy. So we, we I, I need quite a few more candles for this to clean up a little bit and see if I can get an actual entry into the market. All right, let me carry on. Let's have a look at the Euro AUD. All right, this is a perfect example of, remember last week I drew this triangle? I drew that top line and I talked about how I was trying to make these three points fit in. This had not occurred yet, so this did not exist on my chart yet. So I had these three points and I was trying to fit the line in. And I said I wasn't too worried that I'm missing out on this long week, but I'm trying to fit it all in. All right. So it all got drawn and consequently we got a couple of breaks up and, sp and specifically look at this one here all right now look at that type of candle though and this is a classic example why when we get a break a break candle i'm always looking for a candle that looks like this all right that would be a breaking candle and I never enter the trade at this point here because at that area there when the candle has not finished yet I don't know if the candle is going to end up looking like I've drawn it or if it's going to end up all the way back down here looking like this and I'm basically left in a trade that I'm inevitably going to be stopped out of. Does that make sense to everybody? So when you're doing pattern break trades you Either if you don't like entering at that top, well then just change your style and don't be a pattern a, tra uh, a breakout trader because you're not going to like it. Um, or alternatively, you need to be patient and have trust that that is the entry into the trade up there. 
all right because otherwise what's going to happen is you sometimes you you'll get it right all right and but I'll, you're going to go through more frustration than anything else all right so consequently the line held so i would consider that line still holding we're pulling back down now where are we in trend this looks like clear trend here the only problem with the next setup is that we're going to have to break through that line to to clear it so either for this setup right now you can either trade the two lines a break down or a break up or we get rid of the line and you're trading just the bottom line and trend okay and if that's the case and let's say this candle finishes like that tomorrow if I get a candle like this then the next day I'm in again is that clear can we see the trade that we're trying to pick out okay so two choices either trade the, the pattern with the top line in or get rid of the top line and then leave the bottom one and you're trying to trade breakdown or trend continuation all right okay any questions on anything that I've said today type them in while I go back and I summarize Aussie dollar we're going to wait to see what happens at the perimeter all right that's uh, what we've said euro USD very clear uptrend it looks like an uptrend start so we're looking for price action already we're looking for price action and continuation hopefully it happens between these two moving averages but that is not an absolute necessity if I get the price action uh, then we'll be happy to trigger and go ahead on the trade GBP USD there is a four hour pattern you need to wait till three and a half hours approximately this candle will finish and uh, sorry two and a half and you will see whether we're breaking or not or you need to wait another candle gold we've already missed this pullback this counter trend trade off that top line so we need to wait to see what happens in this hot spot USCN we're going to sit this one out um, we're, we're way off it euro yen we have triggered some of you may decide to enter right now I'm going to try and enter this trade between now and London so I'm just going to watch it I'm going to try and get a, a, a little bit better price Kiwi dollar Kiwi dollar I forgot we have a four hour engulfing alternatively we're going to see what occurs when these two join up in that region over there finally Euro AUD you can either trade the pattern break or you can leave the bottom line and try and trade the trend okay any questions does anybody want me to have a look at anything okay we are all good all right so we'll leave it there for today um, what we'll do this week uh, I'll have a look at some trend trading so anybody that is interested in trading trends I'll, I'll introduce a couple of a different method come have a look at it and uh, any questions as always just respond back to the email that you get your invitation on and I will uh, do my best to get back to you as soon as I can have a great afternoon I'll see you all on Thursday at 3 30 Bye for now.